Hey guys, I have great news for us. We have the opportunity to be rejoiced over every day in heaven. Welcome to Deeply Connecting. This is where we are on a journey to connect more deeply with God and others. And recently I was in Luke 15 looking at the lost sheep, the lost coin, the prodigal son, and was asking God what he was wanting to communicate through these stories. And so often I hear these stories interpreted as uh, referring to unbelievers. So like getting an unbeliever to, um, to come home, to be found, and, and how there's much rejoicing in that. Or even um, backslidden Christians, like people that have were once Christians and have rejected God and then come back into the fold and how there's much rejoicing over that. And that is absolutely true. And also, uh, I felt like he was, God was wanting to say, it's not just unbelievers or people that have walked away from the faith coming back that they rejoice over in heaven, that the heavens, the angels, God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rejoice over, but it is every sinner who comes to repentance and everyone who repents, believers, unbelievers alike. And um, so that includes us. So we have opportunity to be rejoiced over in heaven every day by seeing what we need to repent of. And it's kind of like David said, like, search my heart, God, know my ways, search my heart, show me if there's any offensive way in me. And so I believe that that is a great way to not only connect deeper with God and other people, but also, um, and maybe instead of but, uh, and to be rejoiced over is, is when God shows us like an area that we can repent from um, and we decide like, yes, I agree, God, I want to turn and change my mind. I don't want to go that way. I want to go your way. I want to go this way. Um, yeah, that just makes God so happy and all the angels rejoice with them and so anyway, so we have opportunity every day to be rejoiced over in heaven. The caveat or the what needs to be there in order for this to happen at all is recognizing that we mess up, that we sin. And I know, um, actually, so I go to an Anglican fellowship right now, and, and when I first started going to the Anglican church, the the prayer that we do every week of um, repenting of our sins and asking God for forgiveness for not loving our neighbor as ourselves. And um, I really struggled with that because I grew up in, well, I grew up in a Baptist church and then just more evangelical world. We're taught like we are forgiven. Like, I mean, the interpretation that I got was that like, you know, you don't, you don't need to ask for forgiveness anymore because you've already been forgiven. And so one of the things that helped me on this journey, like initially when I started going to Anglican church, I actually didn't want to pray that prayer because I was like, no, like I don't want to ask for forgiveness. I just want to thank God for his forgiveness. But then I was thinking about it. And if you, so say a friend really hurts you and you've forgiven them in your heart already how great is it for repairing your relationship on both sides when that friend comes to you and says, hey, look, I realize that I've wronged you. Will you forgive me? As opposed to taking your forgiveness for granted and then just be like, hey, man, thanks for the forgiveness. Gotcha. Cool. Thanks. Um, or, or even if you've wronged a friend to repair that relationship by going to them and even if they've already forgiven you, say, just admitting you're wrong and asking for their forgiveness. It really helps with, with reconnecting you to each other. And I think it's the same way with God. When, when we repent, when we realize that we've done something that hurts Him and has hurt us and has hurt other people, for us to go to Him and genuinely ask for forgiveness 
And even though he already has forgiven us, um, to ask for his forgiveness and, uh, and really choose to repent from that. And, um, yeah, so just really searching our own hearts, asking God to search our hearts to show us what we need to repent of, and then choosing to repent and knowing that there's much rejoicing in heaven when we do that. It is so fun. So um, another just idea with with repentance and forgiveness and haven't we already been forgiven, something that was really a relief to me. This is kind of in a different direction. But um, I heard this once that a couple phrases of there is nothing that we could ever do or say to make God love us any more or any less than he does right now. Like there's no horrible thing or no great thing that we could do or say uh, to make him love us any more or less. So he loves you right now regardless um, as much as he ever will or has. And, And then also our slate is totally clean before him because of the blood of Jesus. Praise the Lord. All of that sin and gunk that is was on our slate, Jesus just wiped that clean. So from God's perspective, we can come to him without anything between us, which is wonderful. Um, and still, even though that is a truth, that our slate is clean before him, he's, he's wiped that with his blood, yeah, we're forgiven. It is still so restorative and good for our relationship to come to him and ask for forgiveness from him and then receive that we have been forgiven. And um, it's so fun also just knowing that the angels and God rejoice when one sinner repents, believer or unbeliever. When we repent, there is much rejoicing in heaven. So, um, yeah, hope you enjoyed this. Write some comments down below. We'd love to hear them. And if you would like to join me on this journey of connecting more deeply with God and others, click the subscribe button and we'll see you next time.